Good morning everyone and as we continue our second part of the lesson and to inform you in advance because of the complexity and the coverage of this lesson we chose to have three parts and I will disclose later before this lesson ends what are the coverage or what is the coverage of our part three okay so we now move forward to the scope of mediation according to RA 94 9285 voluntary mediation and conciliation is covered by this act and the voluntary mediation could be ad hoc or institutional mediation other than court annexed mediation because the court annexed mediation has a different and separate rule as um, issued by the Supreme Court and ad hoc could uh, means for the time being so parties may agree that for the time being this will be the governing rule now when parties submit to dispute um, mediation rule uh, what would be the rule if the parties opt to submit to a uh, submit the dispute to mediation under an institutional rule there are institutions private institutions engage only in mediation and uh, they have their own rules so if the parties would agree to um, to have mediate the the issue under such institution then the agreement includes that the, the they are to be bound by the internal mediation and administrative policies of such institution and that includes the fees the quali or the the fees uh, place of mediation and also even the internal rules and that's the most important and that includes the agreement i'm referring to the agreement to have such rules govern the mediation of the dispute for the persons involved to abide by such rules so the agreement the dispute will be resolved according to that institutional rules and the parties involved this could be the the uh, mediation party their lawyers their counsels and all other persons that may be involved in the mediation and in case of conflict as to the institutional rules as a the institutional rules as agreed by the parties and the provisions of RA 9285 the law specifically provides that the provisions of RA 9285 should prevail because in the hierarchy of laws the statutory laws are higher than the contractual agreement or the terms and conditions of the agreement of the parties involved so we are still governed by the higher laws the statutory um, loss now participation in mediation this involves um, obviously the parties who are in conflict with each other but a party may designate a lawyer or any other person to provide assistance in the mediation it's possible that um, the party is not familiar with the rules and, and procedures of mediation so they can opt out however uh, opt uh, to have such legal or represent uh, legal representation now the way there could be a waiver you have to if there if this is a right of a party then they could um, have a waiver of this but a waiver shall be made in writing the law specifically provides that and the waiver of participation or legal participation may be rescinded at any time meaning it can be withdrawn or uh, made if uh, ineffective or invalid so you have to remember this um, rule now the place of mediation since mediation is something consensual as we um, emphasize in the first lesson the parties are free to agree on the place of mediation and if there's no agreement the parties don't um, agree at all the place of mediation shall be any place convenient and appropriate to all parties so at least there we can assure we can assure that there could be fairness based on this 
um, um, parameter that any place convenient to the parties and also appropriate. So, what a mediator must do? Since one, uh, the most important um, person also, aside from the participants, like the, um, the adversary, uh, the parties having um, adverse claim to each other, is the mediator. So, the mediator must follow this rule. Before acceptance, the mediator must make an inquiry to determine whether there are any known facts that a reasonable individual, so this is the parameter, this is the standard, a reasonable individual would consider likely to affect the impartiality of the mediator. And these facts could be financial or personal interest in the outcome, or there's a relation, or the mediator could be affected or has a, an interest on the, on the outcome, or any existing or past relationship with a party or a foreseeable participant. During my masteral class, um, I made a report on conflict of interest of mediators, and one of the cases that I researched was, that happened also in Germany was that the mediator used to be the manager of the shipping company of which um, a party to a mediation, the current mediation. So, um, of course, it's obviously there's conflict of interest because of the past relationship. So, the, the result or the agreement of the mediation out of that was considered invalid because of the non-disclosure of the mediation uh, mediator's conflict of interest. Now, before acceptance also, the mediator must disclose to the parties any such fact known or learned as soon as is practical, uh, practical before accepting the mediation. So there should be transparency and honesty on such um, fact or that could affect um, the medi uh, mediator's fairness. And if after acceptance, the mediator learns any fact that could be of like part of the conflict of interest he must disclose it as soon as practicable that's what the law um, requires so what about the mediation uh, mediators qualification is there a specific um, qualification according to RA 9285 any person upon the request of a mediation party must disclose his qualification to mediate the dispute but you have to remember that the law does not require that a mediator shall have special qualifications by background or profession so it doesn't mean that mediators must all be lawyers no there's none but if the parties so require in the agreement then the mediator's qualification must conform to the agreement so um if the conflict has something uh, something to do with I mean, engineering or construction, then of course, um, I, I doubt that uh, the parties would even say or would not even make sure that the mediator will not be able to relate to the terms or the jargons of the construction or engineering industry. So. It is expected also that parties should be on the lookout for this because if the mediator could not relate, then they will have difficulty in dealing with the conflict resolution. Now, what about the information obtained during mediation? The information is considered privileged and confidential, and any party or mediator or non-party par participant just like the one who records, the one who keeps the, the information, the keeper, may refuse to disclose and may prevent any other person from disclosing a mediation communication. And it shall not be subject to discovery and shall be inadmissible in any adversarial proceeding. However, this rule is not absolute. And if you look at it, there's an asterisk to remind you that there is an exception to this. Now, in the adversarial proceeding, these persons involved or previously involved in mediation may not be compelled to disclose. And these are 
the parties, the mediators, and councils, including non-party uh, non participants, any person or engaged in connection with the mediation, it could be an expert witness possible, or any person who obtains or possesses confidential information by reason of his or her profession in relation to the mediation proceedings. And you have to remember that the protection as to the confidentiality of the information shall apply even if a mediator is found to have failed to act impartially. So there's um, the mediator uh, who was not able to act with fairness and impartiality. And a mediator may not be called to testify to provide information gathered in a mediation. And if he is wrongfully subpoenaed, he shall be reimbursed to full cost of his attorney's fees and related expenses. So these are the consequences in case of wrongfully, he being wrongfully subpoenaed. And what if there's a waiver of confidentiality? So the confidentiality rule is not absolute again. So it can be waived. It must be waived in a record or orally during a proceeding by the mediator and the mediation parties. So the law is very um, strict on this. And, so mediator and the mediation parties. And by a non-party -part, uh, participant if the information is given by him or her. Now, what is the effect of the waiver of confidentiality? A person who discloses shall be precluded by say, uh, in saying that the privilege to bar disclosure of the rest of the information necessary to complete the understa understanding of previously disclosed information. This means that um, um, piecemeal disclosure is not allowed because if the information is related to each other, so the party who already disclosed a related information is barred from saying that um, uh, the waiver does not affect the other parts. Then the person who discloses or makes a representation about a mediator, uh, mediations about a mediation is also precluded from the privilege under Section 9 of RA 9285 or about, this is about the privilege confidential information to the extent that the communication prejudices another person in the proceeding and it is necessary for the person prejudiced to respond to the representation of this closure. So the person again who discloses or makes a representation is not again allowed to assert about the privileged information because it prejudices a person to respond to such um, representation or disclosure. Now, for the next lesson, you are to expect the three points. Exception to the privilege against disclosure and the mediator's report, the contents, and also the enforcement of mediated settlement agreement. So this is the most important. Um, first, it's important as to the entry of or agreement of the parties who wants to um, enter into a mediation, especially in institutional um, mediation. Now, I want to thank, actually, um, those people who continue uh, to follow and subscribe our Facebook um, page and also our YouTube channel and don't forget, we are actually developing and improving our website. So, thank you so much. And I learned, since I have limited um, internet connection now, that we have more than 1,000 subscribers in our YouTube channel and almost 6,000 Facebook likers. And I hope you continue to share this. And the Lex team is also um, committed to provide you lessons every week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.